Hi, this is Shorts in Psychology. In this video, I'll be briefly discussing descriptive statistics with some illustrative examples from past exam questions. Descriptive statistics seek to summarise the data. This includes by measuring the centre of the data distribution, its shape, as well as how spread out or dispersed it is around the centre. Central tendency is a single score to define the centre of a distribution. There are three scores we can calculate to measure the centre, and these are the mean, median and mode. The mean, also often referred to as the average, is calculated by adding all the numbers and then dividing by the amount of numbers. The median is the middle number in the distribution. To calculate the median, you need to order the numbers from lowest to highest. To then locate the median, use the equation n plus 1 divided by 2, where n is the number of scores. This value will tell you the location of the median. In this example, n plus 1 would be 6 plus 1, which is 7, divided by 2, which is 3.5. As we can't find the 3.5 number, you calculate the average between the third and fourth numbers, which in this case are 3 and 6, hence the median is 4.5. The mode is the most com common number. Data sets can have two modes, which is called bimodal or more. Some data sets have no mode. The purpose of measures of central tendency is to find the single score that best represents the entire group. The measure that is most appropriate depends on the data set. For example, while the mean is generally the preferred and simplest measure of central tendency, it is less reliable with smaller sample sizes and is influenced by extreme values or outliers in the data set. Therefore, when outliers are present, the median is the more appropriate measure of central tendency to use. However, it also loses reliability with small data sets or if there are large gaps between the values. The mode is the most appropriate measure of central tendency when you have nominal or categorical data. However, it's pretty limited as it cannot exist or be more than one value. Let's now have a look at a past exam question that's assessing the measures of central tendency. Pause the video for a minute to have a read through the question and have an attempt at parts A and B. Hopefully you found part A pretty straightforward as the questions actually calculated the total for you and all you need to do is divide that number 360 by the number of students which is 12, so giving us a mean of 30. In part B it then goes on to tell you that the median for this set of data is 25 and you need to explain why the median is a more accurate representation. Hopefully when you looked at the table you would notice that there is an outlier present student 5 is 80 years old. So despite the fact that most of the students are actually in their mid-20s, that outlier has skewed the mean upwards, giving us a mean of 30. Therefore, because of the presence of that outlier, the median, 25, is a more accurate representation of the age group. A frequency distribution is a way of organising data to show how often a value or measure occurs in a set of data. It shows all the possible values of what has been measured and the number of times each value occurs in the set of data. The scores often arrange from lowest to highest so that the data is presented in an orderly and logical way. The visual nature of the graph then allows us to describe that distribution shape. In a normal distribution, most of the data are located around the centre of the distribution, tapering to a few extremely high or low scores on either side of the mid middle giving the graph a symmetrical or balanced appearance. This is illustrated in graph B. In a skewed distribution, there is a lack of balance or symmetry in the distribution, as the scores are unevenly distributed and cluster to the left or right. The skew of the graph is linked to the direction of its tail. As illustrated in graph C, a positively skewed distribution has many low scores, resulting in the tail tapering in a positive direction towards the higher scores. As illustrated in graph A, a negatively skewed distribution has many high scores, resulting in the tail tapering in a negative direction towards the lower scores. The standard deviation measures the dispersion of a set of data from its mean. In other words, it shows variation in the data. 
While you're not expected to calculate standard deviations in Year 12 psychology, you do need to be able to explain and interpret what a standard deviation represents for a set of scores. For example, a small standard deviation indicates that the data is close together, and a large standard deviation suggests that the data is spread out. In other words, it is more dispersed around the mean. Let's look at a visual example. If we start with the red graph, which has a mean of 2, you can see that most of the data is clustered quite closely around the mean, causing the distribution to be narrower and the standard deviation to be small. If we then compare this to the blue and green graphs, you'll see that as the values are more widely dispersed around the mean, the standard deviation gets larger. To finish, let's look at another past exam question. Pause the video for a few moments to read and attempt the question. So this question is asking you to describe one difference between the heart rates of the two movie groups, and it's worth four marks, which means you need two linked pieces of information. Before we proceed to answer the question, it is worth noting that in the exam, if you chose to describe more than one difference and one of your given differences was correct and the other incorrect, this would cause you to lose marks for the correct answer due to negative marking. Therefore, it's really important to only answer with what is required and not over answer questions in an attempt to secure marks, as this can not only cost you precious time, but also actually cause you to lose marks. Back to answering the question. Just from looking at the graphs, it is clear that graph B has a much wider dispersion around the mean, and this is supported by the information given in the scenario. While both groups have a mean heart rate of 75 beats per minute, the scary movie group has a standard deviation of 3, whereas the funny movie group has a standard deviation of 8. Therefore, in answering this question, you want to explain that as the standard deviation measures the dispersion of data around the mean, the scary movie group's heart rates are clustered much more closely around the mean, hence their standard deviation is only 3. The funny movie group, on the other hand, has wider dispersion around the mean due to more variation in heart rate scores, and thus this group has a larger standard deviation. As a result, the heart rates of the scary movie group are more reliable. Thanks for listening and I hope you found this video helpful.